Today, I'm so glad uh, to be home. I, I had a wonderful time while I was gone, and I can say thoroughly I enjoyed it, and I had a good fellowship with uh, the kinfolk in uh, uh, Texas as well as the kinfolk on the ship. And and uh, I got in yesterday about 4:10, 4:10 in the afternoon. I tell you, I, I, I'm tired. I'm tired, uh, uh, and uh, I just, but I am still so thankful to see each and every one of your faces uh, today. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but here uh, with you all today. And you know, evidently, uh, 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 you weren't ready for me to come back, <laughs> or maybe I wasn't ready to come back. I, I got to my office door and forgot my key at the house. Uh, Went in to try to work on the computer, computer wouldn't work. <laughs> Went to the office to try to work that computer, couldn't figure out how to turn it on. <laughs> I said, I guess I'm not supposed to be doing much today. <laughs> I was thinking, I finally figured it out. You know, me and Brother Calvin were working, we, we finally figured out how to turn it on. Then, then they upgraded the program to something fancy and had to wait for it to configure. And I'm saying, oh man, I tell you, I don't think I'm going to get up there today. <laughs> but by the grace of God, we were able to finish what I needed to do. And I'm here today, and I'm thankful, very thankful to be here today. And I hope, trust, and pray that you are willing, uh, want to come to do a little studying today. Uh, I, it's been about three weeks since I've been here, about three and a half weeks. And the last time I was here, I was preaching about actions and activity. You remember that? Yes, sir. So long ago you can't remember the game. <laughs> so long ago you can't remember. That's how long ago it was. And uh, we chose this text uh, in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 through 16. And it's a long reading. And I'm not going to read it again. But the reason why I chose it was for to get the whole context of what Paul was saying here to the church at Ephesus. Amen. Now, again, what I told you then was that I'm not going to talk about spiritual gifts, but I am going to talk about the gracious gifts that God gives us. Because it says in Ephesians, he gives, by his grace, he gives every man a measure of grace. So I want to talk about that because we are going to talk about actions yeah. actions and activity because that's what we're talking about when we say do more for god i just want us to realize to do more means we need to do something that's right, right. we need to have some actions uh, yeah. and some activities that will uh, correspond with the desire to do more yes. and i think every christian i think every christian in their on their heart and in their heart want to do more now, whether they do more is another question. So somewhere there is a spiritual disconnect between wanting to do more and doing more. And I think it has to do with the idea, the concept of goal setting, the concept of turn over a new leaf, the concept of New Year's resolution. I want to do better, but the hard part is to implement those desires in a practical way that we can see or can be demonstrated by our actions, right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, 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 now uh, again, not to be negative today. I'm not being negative. What I want to be is to be positive, to try to encourage us, to try to move up and do more for God. So, from the first page, Verse number one, just verse number one. There it says, I, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were, you are called. Yeah, Amen. Right. Now, now, that concept alone is a hard it is, it is something we have to try to grasp. Walking worthy of the vocation in which you're called. Amen. If we could just live up to 
the expectations of Jesus Christ, then we would be halfway home toward doing more. Amen. If we could just live up to the worthiness of the call. So many times I have lived under unworthy of the call of Jesus. Now sometimes I did it because I was selfish. Sometimes I did it because I was full of sin. Sometimes I did it because I, I didn't care. And sometimes I did it because I was negligent. Mm -hmm. But whatever a reason why I did it, I lived under the call. I didn't walk worthy of the call. Yeah. So when we're trying to do more, we need to try to walk worthy yeah. of the call of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We need to walk worthy of being a Christian, a Christ-like person, or a Christ-like character. And I say the first thing we do is that we learn to stand up. Stand up and admit to ourselves and then to others that we are God's people. Amen. Sometimes, you know, until we admit it to ourselves, we have a hard time admitting it to others that we are a Christian. We hide and lurk in the shadows of humanity, trying not to be discovered trying to ease around and not be detected. But I'm saying if you want to walk worthy, if you want to have spiritual, you need to start standing up for God. Amen. A lot of times we don't want to stand up because we're afraid. We're afraid if somebody knows exactly what we're trying to be, then they're not going to let us participate with them anymore. I'll tell you right now, sinners will let you sin with them anytime you want. Amen. Even if they know you're a Christian. They don't care. They're not discriminatory. They're not going to say, no, 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 you're not going to drink with me because you know you're a Christian. They're not going to say that. You're not going to gamble here because you know you're not supposed to. They're not going to be your conscience. If you want to do wrong, they'll let you do wrong. But you need to stand up for yourself to walk worthy of the vocation in which you are called. Yes, sir. And go down to verse number, verse number seven on the next slide. Yeah. And this is the part I was trying to say. Now it talked about spiritual gifts in the latter part of these verses. But I want to talk about your gift that God has given you. Yeah. Say it in verse number seven, but unto who? Everyone. Every one of us. Now, did that leave anybody out? No. no. Must have left out Jimmy. No. <laughs> but unto every one of us. Unto every one of us. Each one of us has yeah. been given grace yes, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Amen. You got something to offer today. Amen. You got something to utilize today. Yes, sir. You got something. You can try to deny it. Mm -hmm. You can try to defer it. You can try to lie about it. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But to every one of us, and we're talking about believers. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about confirmed Christian believers. Mm -hmm. To every one of us have been given a part of grace, a measure of Christ. We got something. Yeah. Uh, we got something. Yes, and if we got something, then we ought to be willing to show something and demonstrate something and be something more than what we have been. When I think about my own life, there are some times when I got to cry a little bit. When I realize exactly just how, how poorly I performed, how poorly I walked, how unworthy I was. Sometimes I got to shed a tear then I think back on when I finally connected with the Christ in the scripture, I shed another tear. Because yeah, right. even though I was unworthy, even though I wasn't worth much, God still gave me something special. Yeah, yeah. So one was tears of sadness, the other is tears of joy, and the bottom line is that 
we got something to say. That's why that brother said we love to praise him. Yeah. We love to praise him. Why? Because he gave us something special. Yeah. How many of us got it? You said every one of us. He didn't get Buck. He didn't get Jimmy. He didn't get Junior. He didn't get Toodles. He didn't get everybody, did he? Every one of us. Every one of us got something. And then with that something, we ought to be able to demonstrate to God some spiritual activity. So let's go down to the next slide. Why would he give it to us? Now, when he gave the spiritual gifts, there was a purpose. And I want to, if I may, with your permission, extrapolate the same reasoning for why he gave us that grace. In verse number 14, Brother Sterling, you see it on the board. That we hence. That we hence. Be no more children. Wait a second. Hence. Uh, come on. Hence. Come on. <laughs> that we hence. See, sometimes we need to understand God is expecting something. Exactly. We're not going to be able to rely on juvenile, infantile, baby practices. Yes. At some point, we're going to have to move on from that. Amen. Here it says that you will be hence forth. So it said from here forward, or from here forward, you, are you following me? Read. Be no more children. You'll be no more children. Because when you're a child, you can always make an excuse that I was ignorant and young and just didn't know no better. I didn't know no better. I can say I'm young and in faith. I just didn't know, brother. You know I didn't know. But the bottom line is that at some point, at some point, our actions and our activities are going to have to mimic and somehow indicate exactly what Christ is in our lives. I'm telling you right now, you can't be children forever. It's just too bad. It's just too bad. You know, I wouldn't mind. I, I don't want. I want to be. I want to be a selective child. Yeah, I'm all right. yeah, well. What I mean, I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. I want daddy to give me money. <laughs> I want daddy to buy my clothes. Yeah. I want daddy to buy my shoes. Yeah. I want daddy to buy my cars. Yeah. But I don't want daddy to tell me what to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Home. I don't want dad to tell me where I can go. I don't want dad to tell me where my friends going to be. I'm a selective child. I'm a selective child. So in us, we want God to come when we need him. When we're hurt, we want to be, we want to be given comfort. When we are, when we bereaved, we want to be comforted. When we're down, we want us to be picked up. When we're broke, we want to put money in our pocket. But we don't want God to tell us what to do. We don't want God to tell us how to act. We don't want God to tell us to stay straight. We don't want that. We want to be selective children of God. But I'm telling you, here it says that your activity ought to mimic spiritual things. Yes, that you be no, you be hits for from now on, from this point forward. I hope you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The problem I'm having right now is that I haven't really done any preaching. I feel like I'm gone. And I'm having what they call a conniption fit. Yeah. <laughs> and them conniption fits will hit you from time to time. All right. And so I'm going to try to calm myself down. I'm going to try to calm myself down. Right. Now, what, what, did, what, what did it say again? That we, will, that we hit for it, uh -huh. be no more children. No more children. Toss to and fro. Toss to and fro. And carry it out with every wind of doctrine uh -huh. by the side of men and cunning crap. Mm. You see, I think that's still why we have our measure of grace. Yeah. And we have the Bible. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Now they didn't have that, so they had to get some spiritual gifts to set in place to keep them from straying. Yeah. Yeah. But we have the scripture, so we don't need to stray. But guess what? The desire to stray is out there. Yeah. It's infiltrating the church of our Lord. Yeah. And folks are just becoming deviant and doing whatever they want to do. Yeah. But God still wants you to stay straight. Yeah. Now this, I told you today, so far, is not a part of my lesson. I hope you know that. I didn't turn any pages, did I? Did you see me turn the pages? You see me look down? I ain't got there yet, Brother Lewis. And you know that's trouble. And he's shaking his head now. He's shaking his head now because now I'm getting, I'm getting to the point of my next slide. The next slide says, this is the title of our sermon today. <laughs> this is the title of our sermon today, Brother Lewis. I was getting there quick and fast as I could. How long did it take me? Five minutes? <laughs> took me five minutes to get there? <laughs> spiritual activity two. Okay. Because I'm talking about doing some spiritual actions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I knew it took a little long to get there. I make no apologies, <laughs> but I'll know when to stop. I know when to stop. So we're talking about actions, and, and I told you this was a that this lesson came about when I was talking to a good sister who was going through some issues, yeah. and, and, and was wondering she couldn't do what she used to could do, and she was feeling somewhat uh, inept and not uh, uh, available and just. Felt like, well, if I can't do anything, then how am I going to do more for God? Yeah. And I was just telling her that any activity and any action yes, that you can do, yeah. and God knows what you're capable of because he gave you the grace. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you can do that, then God is pleased. Amen. May not be what you used to could do. Right. It may not ever be what you used to do. Yes, but it's got to be what you can do today. Yeah. Do you want to do more for God? Yes, sir. How many of you want to do more? Amen. Yeah, raise your hand up here. Amen. If you want to do more for God, then you start there and start to increase a little bit at a time. Yeah. Nobody's asking you to become a spiritual giant overnight. Yeah. That's, a, that's a, you can't do that. I couldn't do that. But we're asking you to do more than you've ever done right. each and every day. Yeah. If you made it today, tomorrow you do a little more. You hear what I'm saying? Every day, increase a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so I did good on Monday, mm -hmm. and I did a little more on Tuesday, wow. did a little more on Wednesday, completely failed on Thursday. Yeah. What I do on Friday? Back Get back up! Yeah. Dust yourself off and try it again. Yeah. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, we're gonna have our failures. Yes, we're gonna have our failures. I preached a sermon a while ago called Rise and Fall. Yes, it really was about rising before you fall. Yes, and all I'm saying, when you fall, get up. Yes, Just get up and try it again. Yes, Sometimes what happens when we fall, we get so discouraged with ourselves that we just want to quit. Yeah. I'm just good for nothing. Yeah. I'm just sorry. Oh, uh, I, why should I even try? I just give up. That's not the right attitude. No, sir. No, sir. You just keep on trying. Mm -hmm. Actions mean, it means the manner and method of performing. Activity means something that's done as work for a particular purpose. Right. We need to plan our actions because proper spiritual activity takes planning. Planning gives direction. Now, we talked about this. Yeah. Which way do I go? Take the spiritual pathway. I told you last time it's the one less traveled by. In Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Yeah. Enter into where? Straight gate. At the straight gate. Yeah. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to where? Yeah. Now if you understand where the gates lead, then you ought to know which way you ought to be going. Yeah. We need to perform actions and activity that propel us down to the, the lesser path, the straight and narrow way. So activity and our actions. Today we find out what it actually means to make this church function. 
Look at Ephesians 4. Go back to Ephesians 4. Yeah. The book of Ephesians gives us practical information yes, for our spiritual lives. Yeah. It provides us with some sound teaching on the way we should act, yes, our activity, and our actions. How should we act? Now, I've already kind of talked about a little bit of this in verse number one, yeah. where we walk worthy. Verse number two, it says, with and with lowliness. Yes, and what? Meekness. Keep reading it, brother. With long suffering, uh -huh. forbearing one another in love. Oh, that's enough right there. Keep reading. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of the yeah. bond of peace. Okay. There are things, this is talking about activity and actions. How we need to act with one another. We are urged to stop and think about the statement. To live worthy. Not only means, it means for us to live humbly with meekness, long-suffering, gentle, patient, bearing with one another. And, and as a church that works together, we've got to be willing to bear one another's burden. Because sometimes we get so frustrated when others don't seem to measure up to our expectations. Oh no, they didn't do that again, did they? Uh-huh. And then sometimes we're so judgmental. Yes. So there you went that way, huh? Look how you look. The bottom line is that sometimes we gotta bear one of those burdens. Yes. Folk make mistakes. Yes. And because they make mistakes, we don't throw them away like yesterday's trash. Right. We don't throw it away. We still try to encourage them. Yes. We do not endorse them. Right. We do not pat them on the back. Right. We try to correct them in love. Yeah. and encourage them, yeah. pick them up, yeah. get them on the right path. Right. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. Yes, because that's what God wants us to do. Right. We got to try to protect the unity of our body. Amen. <clears throat> the unity of our fellowship. We're supposed to have the Spirit of God in us. Amen. We will always have a different opinion we will have different personalities, but we must come together on certain things. Certain things we have to agree on. Right. You see, I'm not gonna tell you what's the best color for your car, home, carpet, whatever, suit, whatever, you do what you gotta do. But there are some things we need to come together on and agree with. And here, in this particular passage, there's one body. Yes, yeah. We gotta agree with that. Yeah. There's one spirit. Yeah. We gotta agree with that. Yeah. There's one hope, mm -hmm. one love, yes, one faith, one baptism, yeah. and one God. Yes, you, and this, what this is about, this is not personal preference. Sure. A lot of folks think that church and worship is personal preference. No, no, no. no it's just obedience to God. Yeah. And that's what it's about. It's not about personal preference. I've heard Brother Lewis say a lot of times, he liked piano music, but he, if you want to play it, play it in his house. Right. On his piano. Right. Not in the church, because yes, the Bible has not authorized such. Yeah. So I understand that. It's not about personal preference. It's about spiritual insistence. Yes, one body, one faith, yeah. one hope yeah. of our calling, one baptism, one church, one Lord. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yes, now we can agree about that. Amen. You may not like my tie, you may not like my hectic, you may not like nothing I got on, and that's fine with me, because I like it, but let me tell you something. We got to agree on the church of Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got to agree on the church of Christ. Yes. We may not agree on nothing else. Yeah. We may have to argue a few points here and there. Yeah. But brother, that just, I remember I had this, I had a suit on one time. And I thought I was looking pretty good. <laughs> I did. And it was, had a little tie that was black and orange. And I thought I was doing something. When I got to the back, I got folks saying, what do you think this is, Halloween? <laughs> I said, no. 
Well, you need to wear that on Halloween because that was, you look know, like you're on Halloween night. My wife said when I was getting ready to go that morning, yeah, I wouldn't wear that. You look like you're going to Halloween. <laughs> of course, I wasn't listening to her. I was going to say to myself, this is my personal preference. Now, needless to say, I haven't worn it again. <laughs> Still got it in there. I look at it and say, I don't understand why they didn't get that. I might try it again. Near Halloween. <laughs> but the bottom line is that, you know, the personal preference is one thing, but we can agree today on several points. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one hope, one call, we're one, 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 one. It's the same. That's what Paul was trying to tell us. He was trying to bring together two the, the, the divergent sides, Gentile and Jew, but trying to let them know something. You can no longer be two separate entities. You now got to be one. And you're brought one by Jesus Christ. Read Ephesians, second chapter, talk about breaking down the middle wall of partition. Read about how we're all children of God by faith. Read different things about how we're brought together. Amen. A lot of things we can do. We can't mess with the scripture. We can't mess with the way God wants things. Just because we think it ought to be that way. We have received a calling of God. There will be some times when you're going to wish a person would just get his life together. There will be times when people will annoy you. However, you're commanded to be patient with them. Bear with them, one another in love. You know what kills a lot of churches today? Lack of unity. It kills individual congregations. Now, I'm not gonna be unified with folk that I don't think do the same thing I do. If you wanna watch me where I go, I wanna go to places where I'm comfortable going. And I don't care if there's a question, I'm not coming. Because I believe that I don't want to be caught up in the gray areas of life. Yeah. And I don't have to go everywhere. That's right. But I do need to come here. Yes, yes. I need to worship here and do what God wants me to do here. Right. I have a philosophy and sometimes I have to break it. But I am bound by the, the strategic boundaries of the 605, the 210, the 60, and maybe as far as the 215. Uh, but that's as far as I'm willing to go. <laughs> But I'm only going to go where I can go because I'm trying to stay true to God. Amen. Lack of unity has hurt people. Nominal things. I heard, I think it's for heard it from Brother Lewis or something about members that would not talk to members for 30 years because one wanted a blue pew and one wanted a red pew. I don't know what, I don't know who won that argument, but the other person wouldn't talk for 30 years. Got to sit on this red pew every day, making me sick. <laughs> I guess. All I know is that sometimes we let the smallest little things hinder us from being effective Christians. You got activity and actions to do it. I'm done now for the day. You see? You see what I'm talking about? I'm done today. But you're going to let something stop you from spiritual activity. But I'll tell you right now, we got to do something. We're going to have to do something. We just cannot stay stagnant. We cannot not do anything. Can't just get baptized and sit down and expect God to save you. Amen. Getting into the church is just the first thing you do. But you know what? And I think it might be in a lot of ways the simplest thing to do. But to live right until you die, that's going to be the hard part. Because if you live, if you get baptized and live 50 years, you got 50 years to make mistakes, 50 years to be challenged, 50 years to fall and get up, 50 years for a lot of different things. So I'm saying, once you get in, we got to try to stay straight. We do it by being available, to be active, to try to do what God wants to do, to be benevolent, to be giving, and I've always said this, I don't necessarily worry about your money, but if you give me you, I'll get your money. Yeah, I'll tell you that right now, I got your money. Yes, now if I can get a hold of Brother Sterling, 
If I wrestle them long enough, I'm getting the money. Somewhere in that back pocket got to be some money. Or a credit card or something. Or maybe he let his wife hold on to it. Then I have to go over there and snatch her purse and look. But the bottom line is that if you give your total self to God, we'll get the money. Uh, and I'll tell you this, there's some who go, we're going to fight for the money. It's just too stingy to give it up. Well, those folks will have to have a certain summer for them. Brother Lewis is working right now on it. <laughs> Brother Lewis C. is working on it right now. We may have to do like Brother Dyson, just report what you're giving and let yourself be shamed and embarrassed. Some folks won't be shamed and embarrassed. But the bottom line is that we got to do some things for God. We got to do more activity. Walk worthy today. Walk. If you don't get nothing else today, Walk worthy of the vocation in which you are called. Three things I talked about. You got a grace that God gave you. So everybody has something that they can demonstrate and give. And from henceforth, from now on, we got to start being no more children. And we got to be mature in Christ. If you're a member of the church today and you know you haven't been living up to the expectation, and you know what you need to do? Get it right with God. Yeah. Repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3 and 5, Acts 17, chapter, uh, verse, uh, chapter 17, verse 30. At the time of this ignorance, what God what, winked at, but now command all men everywhere to repent. Mm -hmm. Repent of your sins. Mm -hmm. At least now get in the right frame of mind and condition to try to serve God the best way you can. Yeah. And if by chance you're not a member of the Church of Christ, you must remember this. Jesus is going to come back for his church. Yeah. In Matthew 16, 18, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's right. He's coming back for his church. Mm -hmm. And to get into his church, you've got to understand his story. Yeah. What is his story? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He lived, he died, he was buried, and he rose again. That's his story. Yeah. Then you gotta believe he did it, not because he was an evil man, but he did it for your sins yeah. uh, and my sins. Yeah. And now you are in a frame of mind to believe Jesus came and died for me. Yeah. What will I do about it? Well, I will repent of my evil ways and I will confess Jesus to be the Son of God, like the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts the eighth chapter, yeah. verses 30, 30, 35 and 36. When he said, hey, here's water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? He said, you can if you want, or thou mayest. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They got out of the chariot and got in the water. Yeah. He baptized him. He said, Philip baptized him. Yeah. They got into the water. I don't know how you get into a, a teacup or, or, some, or whatever you get. You got to get into the water. Yes, to be baptized. And then you know what? Romans 6, verses 3 and 4 say you're buried with him. Why the water? Because it's the symbols of the burial of Jesus. You're buried with him in the water, raised with him like he was raised from resurrection, and then you walk in newness of life. That's why. That's why. If you can do those things, then you too can get ready to do more for God. Yeah. So I'm telling you right now, as soon as you find that water, you better be ready to do more. You better rearrange your priorities. And let's do more. We're talking about activity and actions. We'll finish it next week. Activities and actions. That's what we're talking about. And I believe God gives us enough to be able to perform those tasks. Amen. What's the song of invitation? Have you been to Jesus? We're going to sing that song right now. Let's stand and let us sing. Have you been to Jesus?